we shall move along and say hello to a man who had a fantastic evening on Saturday. Massive win over Gerald Mearshart, the veteran himself. Big win for the 26-year-old body bags. Joe Pfeiffer, we had him on the show a few months ago after his first official UFC win. And what a story. We're not going to go over the whole entire story, but I did want to talk to him about the uh, the massive win. And so without further ado, let us say hello to Joe Piper, who looks fantastic. Joe, where are you right now? Uh, I'm at my uh, my high school friend's house out here in Jupiter, Florida. I had to get out oh, of Miami. God. A little too packed, but the, he's the one that um, does all like my film stuff for me. So I'm at his desk, his setup, and uh, I figured it'd be nice so I don't look like uh, terrible. <laughs> First of all, this this might be the greatest setup that we've ever had in the history of the program. You've got this. He, he, this yeah, this. he literally said that this was going to be this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the camera is fantastic. You, you look way wow. better than I do. You've got that light behind you there, like the neon light. This isn't. Yeah. You should you should move to Jupiter just to do all your interviews here. You look incredible. You're you're freaking hey, flexing. Yeah. Looks like you're about to make weight right now. You're so lean, right? Yeah. I mean, this is unbelievable. Well done. Oh man, thank you. Yeah, I mean, thank thank my boy Chandler Henry. This is all possible because of him. So he let me and my uh, my best friend stay here, and uh, we were you know going and seeing some sea turtles on the beach last night. It was crazy, man. I seen a leatherback. I know there's only like fourteen hundred of those left, and they're endangered. So just trying to let my mind you know get away from all the chaos. Sure. So you didn't like Miami? It was a little too much for you. Uh, I'm not a partier, Ariel. I uh, you know mm. like. I went to a steakhouse, you know, I rented a car. It was fun. My, my company disruptive, they, um, you know, they rented it for me and made sure I had a good time out there, had the mansion set up for me for 15 of my teammates. So, um, it was fun. I enjoyed it, but nah, man, I seen all these, you know, all these people like fighting and shit and I just, I don't like that stuff. I got, this is how far you've come, Joe. Um, I got a press release that you were at this steakhouse on Saturday. I was like, look at Joe Pfeiffer press release that he went to a steakhouse on Saturday night. I mean, the man has come up in a big way. I think you're doing some stuff. You mentioned disruptive with, uh, my guy, Marty fish, right? The, uh, yes. the, the former yes. tennis player and Alex Davis. Yeah. yeah. Legendary gentlemen, those two. Yeah. So, so I actually, I actually, uh, just, you know, partnered with them. And, uh, you know, they work alongside my management group and, um, you know, they're really stepping up and trying to elevate me to be able to, um, you know, you know how the sport goes, man. So they're really trying to guide me to make the most possible income um, to really change my life beyond just fighting. And that's something that is important to me where I don't take fights because I need money, but I take fights because they make sense for my career and they really allow me to become a superstar. And that's something that you know, Alex Davis and Marty Fish are on board with and trying to help with, um, let alone I have, you know, my my manager, Lloyd Pearson, who's amazing. I love that guy. And uh, I can honestly say I love the team and the support that I have. Um, but because of them, I was able to bring 15 of my teammates out. And, you know, that's quite expensive. So, um, you know, super, super big, big thank you to Alex Davis, you know, Lloyd Pearson, Marty Fish and uh, Mike Vespa. Man, it feels like it's all coming together for you now, and and I love to see it. You certainly deserve it, um, and and it's great because here you are on a big card like this, Miami. There was like uh, I think it was eighteen or nineteen thousand people there. Uh, this isn't a fight night. This is a pay per view for you. This is a big pay per view debut. Just like everything coming together, could you even describe? You know, we talked about the trials and tribulations, but like, is this does this all feel like a lot to process at the moment? How are you making sense of all of this? You get another big finish. You're on fire. It just it feels like the stars are aligning for Joe Pfeiffer right now. I mean, Ariel, you like you know from the last time I talked to you, yeah, it was about the trials and tribulations, right? But now it's about it's about making this a business that is profitable. You know, this is, I'm not going to be able to do this forever. And um, one of the things that I really want to do is I want to be exciting in the sport. You know, Justin Gaethje is someone that everybody keeps telling me I look like, so I might as well use him as the example. But, you know, it, whether he wins or lose, everybody wants to see him, almost like him and Michael Chandler. So I want, you know, I, I never plan on losing. None of us do, especially if we believe in ourselves, right? So, you know, just being able to do all these things like – um you know, go out there and have my first pay-per-view card, knock out a guy that has 50 fights, you know, almost 20 fights in the UFC, been in there since 2016 and whatever, has 10 finishes, you know, it's cool. Um, but I'm not surprised by any of it, man, because this is something, like, again, I never had a plan B. This is all I've envisioned myself doing. Now, is it a little bit 
um, surreal when it's happening after the fact. Yes. But before, before, you know, I put immense pressure on myself and, uh, I do very well with pressure, man. I do very well with pressure. And if you guys watched the fight, I'm sure you would agree. I did not look like I was mm -hmm. struck by the moment in any way. Were you surprised that they gave you Gerald? Just like, you know, not, not that you don't deserve a Gerald, but big difference I between Alan Amadovsky. But you, you asked for it. Okay. Why, why did you ask for it? Uh, so I was offered three short notice fights. I said yes to all of them. Um, the last two being on two different conditions, obviously, uh, financially. And, um, you know, one of the guys chose somebody else and that was, that was cool. I don't think it was meant to be not yet at this point in my career. And then the other one just kind of didn't make sense, but I still said yes. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and like I said, I was building on my frame, trying to get bigger, become a bigger middleweight. I hadn't been able to weight train for my past, uh, two fights from not this past December, but the one before when I made my comeback and then I had the contender. So my past three fights, I'm sorry. So. And then I had my UFC debut. I wasn't able to weightlift. I wasn't able to train. I wasn't able to, you know, get a shame conditioning program going. Sorry, Ariel. Um, so, yeah, uh -huh. uh, you know, I, we, we put all that together. And, uh, you know, I called out Dustin Stoltzfus. I DM'd him. He had some health issues. And uh, I know I was a little bit heated this weekend. It was, like, really hard on calling him out. And I still am going to call him out and still want that fight because it's personal for me and he's in the UFC. So why shouldn't I be allowed to fight somebody that's in my division? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I DM Gerald Mearshart because I saw his guy fell off. Dustin turned me down and, um, you know, Gerald was very, you know, I respect him. I've watched him for years and years before I was ever even close to in the UFC. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it came to fruition. We sent it to our managers and it came, it came about. And I knew I was ready for it. It's just the public didn't. Wait, so so you are uh, you're going out there and making the fights yourself. You're DMing your potential opponents. What are you writing these guys when you write to them? I'll read it to you. Let me look it up. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, this I'll is incredible. <laughs> I uh, you know oh. what, man? You know, I wasn't doing it in a in a in a. I'm not. I'm not. Like I hate the people that I'm fighting, but you know, I, I really do have respect for them. And uh, I almost felt bad about this weekend just because, you know, I know his wife and his kid were there. I didn't even know he was married or had a kid or anything like that. But, yeah, I mean, it bothers me. So I said, uh, I said, hey, my brother, I'd love to fight you as a replacement if you need an opponent of either of these pay-per-view cards if you're down. I wrote this on January 7th. Um, I said, fan, by the way, too, brother, I've been watching UFC all my life. It's a little bit weird now, but March for sure if you're down. He said, I appreciate it, man. Of course, I'm down. Yeah, let whoever know, and I'll show this to my manager as well. Awesome debut, by the way. And that's how it came to be. Wow. We screenshot it. We wow. sent it to our managers. Yeah. And you know, then it nobody, just happened. And the, respect. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and listen, I've been telling my my teammate, Andre Petrovsky, to call him out for a while because I think he's... I don't want to insult the man. So the man is tough. He's durable. But... I think he's a very winnable fight and uh, I think he's a very stylistically good fight for someone like me because I like to stand and bang. Right. But I also have grappling skills that are underrated or just kind of bypass because I knock everybody out so far. So, uh, but I'm a complete mixed martial artist, man. So uh, I wanted this fight. I thought it was a good test. I thought it was a good, exactly like, Oh, you're fighting up in competition. But for me, it's like, mm. no, nah, no, nah. the guys I train with on the daily are some of the toughest competition I've ever had. Uh, I did see in the post fight press conference you said that uh, everyone was saying when you were watching him, uh, you felt like he was slow, but you wanted to feel that slowness, so to speak. Is that kind of what you were biting your tongue about there? That like he just wasn't at your level in terms of the speed that he brings to the table? I just don't think he's at my level on any facet of mixed martial arts. I don't think he's a good boxer. Um, I don't even, I don't think he's a good boxer. I don't think he's a great boxer. I think he's a fair boxer. Um, but. I mean, I would never advise Gerald to go and do any type of boxing event. You know, I, I don't think he's very good at striking whatsoever. Um, and it sounds like I'm an asshole for that, but it is what it is. You know, I don't think he's a very good kickboxer. You know, that's why I don't know if you saw the fight, but I was kind of like, oh, hey, kick me again. Like, I knew all he wanted was uh, body kick, leg kick, and then maybe throw up a head kick in hopes. You know, I knew his biggest chance on the feet was a hope was a lucky was a hail mary it wasn't he was never going to beat me and that's why i was so patient with i don't need to blitz this guy i don't need to knock this guy out in the first minute and plus i'm not satisfied beating somebody in one minute so 
uh, I just took my time, man. And, uh, I knew I was faster. I knew I was stronger. I knew that I was a better boxer, better kickboxer, better wrestler for sure. And I also believe I'm a better jujitsu practitioner than he is. You know, I'm a brown belt and I can grapple with the best. Like that's a fact I've tested it. You know, it's, I'm not just saying this just cause it's not been on camera. doesn't mean it's not true. So yeah, Ariel, I thought it was well, better just... everywhere. Really. <laughs> And I and I could see that, and I believe you as well. But you just said you're not satisfied when you finish a fight in the first minute. Why not? Isn't that the dream? Hundred percent. The dream is to win. You know, it's it, it's my ego. You know, that's the the primal nature in me. I, I want to be in a fight. You know, um, but I'm thankful I'm not in a fight. Um, you know, I'm not respectfully. I'm not complaining, but I'm not making the kind of money to be into a, a dog fight. Um, not yet. And, um, you know, I'm earning my stripes and I'm proving to people that I am a serious person about this. And I train very hard. And, you know, hopefully that showed through my physique, through my training, through my demeanor, through my weight cut. You know, that was a very hard weight cut. It was almost traumatizing. It fucking sucked. Um, but I'm trying to become better all the way around. You know, I know I can't do this forever. And I really want to make a fucking statement going through here as somebody that was like, oh, shit, like this kid came out of nowhere. Um, when you say almost traumatizing, what do you mean by that? As far as the oh, weight man, cut is was concerned, just, I was just bitching. <laughs> I was just bitching. It was it was tough. Like I had to have three workouts the same day as um, the the day before the weigh-ins. Um, I had one at ten a.m. I had one at seven to like nine thirty p.m. And then I woke up and I I just like I couldn't sleep and I was borderline dead. <laughs> Jeez! But I like, got up at two a.m. and hit another workout. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was just tough. It was really tough. That's all, you know, it sucks. It kind of ruins, it ruins the experience, Ariel, when you, when you have nothing left in your body and it's really that hard to get down and, you know, it's tough. I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit yoked up this time. So <laughs> it was tough. I see it. So, uh, is 205 in your future? Could be, could be in a couple of years, man. Could be. I don't know how long my okay. body, you know, if I continue to do this program, like Thursday, when I get back, I'm still in Florida now, but Thursday, when I get back, I'm going to jump on another program. Um, I'm going to go get some things checked out medically, um, being my elbow and uh, the good arm. And, uh, you know, just make sure that my body's healthy. I had ignored a couple of things. You know, we all go into things with bumps and bruises and this one a little bit more uh, than usual. Uh, so I'm going to go get checked out, get healthy and let's figure out the next best move. Right. What's wrong with the elbow? So, uh, when I, when I extend right now, I'm just getting a ton of nerve pain for some reason. Um, I'm not sure why. So I just want to make sure that I didn't chip a bone or I didn't do something to a ligament. And then, you know, I ignore it, go into a camp and then get hurt. You know, the last thing I ever would want to do is, uh, pull out of a fight, you know? Um, and I right. thought I broke my ribs this camp as well. And, uh, luckily I didn't. And this was about four or five weeks out. I, I threw a kid and his knee went into my ribs and I, I couldn't breathe uh. for like a week. And, uh, yeah, man, this, this, listen, every time, whether it's with you in your career or me in my career, every time I feel like there's a big moment coming, there's always these obstacles that life throws at you and it, it tries to test you and see how much you really want it. And, uh, I just kind of put my head down, shut the fuck up and kept going. Here we are it paid off. A hundred percent. Speaking of that, I know he's in your weight class, but like Izzy's post-fight interview, did that speak to you? What he said there? Did you, I, I'm assuming you heard it just about like the happiness that he had as a result of putting himself out there despite the obstacles. You know, I, um, I have a lot of respect for Izzy just because of the mannerisms of when we were at Wayans and, um, I was never like a fan of some of the things he said and some of the antics, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, I walked up to him and I said, Hey, like I, I personally, so we do like me and Sean Brady do like a little podcast of our predictions. And I thought, I, I thought Izzy was going to win the first time when I was there live at MSG. And then I, I believed he was going to get it back now. Cause I feel like he really like kind of wasn't very social and like was quiet compared to his normal self and went to the doghouse and really put in the work. And I liked, I listened to his interviews, you know, I, I don't care about fighting the guy. I, I, that's not even in my head. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, I'm not even there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing a, a Rosa Jr. Talking all this shit about going and being a two, three world weight champion. I'm not even in the fucking top 15 yet, let alone have I ever beat a top 15 guy, you know? So I'm a realist, man. So, um, to answer your question, 
is uh, I have a lot of respect for the man. Um, and I told him good skill. And I believe you're the true champion. You'll go out there and you'll get it done. And uh, I know Alex is very dangerous, but I don't feel Alex has the same skills as Izzy. And I never did. And to see him go out there and knock a man out that has knocked him, you know, TKO'd and knocked him out once and beat him on decision. I have so much respect for that, man. That's that dog life. That's that dog shit. I relate to that. And um, yes, I understand exactly what he was talking about. I mean, man, when everybody, when you're at that magnitude and you have hundreds of thousands of people that are talking shit, oh, he owns your ass. I even see kids that I know, Ariel, on fucking Snapchat or Instagram, and they still talk shit after he won. Like, oh, man, you won one, but you still got your ass on three to one. You know, that, that, that that's the kind of shit that people don't consider. Like, you could never do what we do. You could never do it. So I just, I don't, I'm, I'm happy for the man. I saw the speech. I thought it was heartfelt. I fuck with it. I love it. And uh, Izzy's the fucking man, dude. He really is. He's the man after that. Love that. Love that. Um, and uh, I, 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 I love how, I love how you keep it real because I see this stuff as well. I'm not a fighter and I see people being like, oh, but you lost. It's like, the oh, fuck are you? I can't even imagine being a fighter. I think it was, um, who was it? Uh, Miller, after her Veronica Macedo fight, was posting screen grabs of people in her, um, in her, in her DM saying like, "My three-year-old's a better fighter than you." Like, what the fuck? These people, you guys are UFC fighters, and you and I can't even imagine the shit that you have to read on Instagram and on Twitter and all these other places. So it, Ariel, it, it, they, it, they it, don't, they don't, because people are fucking ignorant. You know that people are ignorant. They'll talk hmm. shit on you. They'll talk shit on me. They don't give a fuck about my past, I, and that's cool. That's fine. I don't put my past out there to get a fucking sorry. Hey man, sorry. Put my past out there, and I always say this. I am not a role model. I want to be an inspiration. And I want to be an inspiration for the kids that listen, for the people that are coachable, for the people that give a fuck about other people. And mm. before I make the walk, I'm fucking nervous. I have doubts. My The little devil in my head called instinct, called protective nature that we're designed and born with. You'll never not make that walk and not have a fear. And anybody, I don't care. Oh, I wasn't scared. It ain't about being scared. It's about, you know, you can get knocked out. You know, you can get hurt. You know, things can go wrong. You know, it might not, you could be in the best shape of your life. You could do everything right and it can still go wrong. I'm just, mm. what helps me free my mind because I have all those feelings and I have the cotton mouth and I get nervous and sometimes my legs aren't always there, you know? But John Jones said in one of the interviews that I listened to the day of the fight, and he was like, some people are consumed by those fears, consumed by those butterflies, consumed by those negative thoughts to the point that it hinders their performance. I ride those emotions. And uh, it meant a lot to me because that's that's how I relate. I get That's why I go to a dark place because it's like, nah, motherfucker, I'm going to fight back. And if I'm going to lose, I'm going to fucking lose in style. You knock me the fuck out or I'm knocking you the fuck out. So I'm a firm believer in what's meant to be will be. And that kind of frees my mind to just go out there and give the best that I can give. And whatever the result is, the result is. But I always say what's meant to be will be. I just don't believe losing's in my next chapter of life. So I, I love that. By the way, I also love uh, your podcast with Sean Brady. You just mentioned it because um, I saw this clip of you guys saying who your favorite MMA journalist was. And you both said me. So thank you so much. I appreciate ah, that very much. You, that was very nice no, you guys. Hey, listen, Ariel, I, I watched your show for many years too, man. I, you've been, you've been, you never, you never went like this. You've always just been going like this. You've always interviewed. You've always stayed consistent. I know you put a, I, doing a podcast is hard for me, man, but you just keep fucking putting, this is your life, man. I respect you. I could never do what you do. I appreciate it. And I can never do what you do. Um, I, I do want to know about Dustin. What's the beef with Dustin Stoltfus? You just said uh, it's personal with, with him. Ready? Look at this. Look yeah. at my arm. That's the that shit, okay. don't, that shit will never go straight again because of that motherfucker. Okay, so, so that's why it's personal, just because of it. Because yeah, I know you have the history with him. But like, okay. You think, well, why? Yeah, like, because yeah, he did man, it on purpose, I mean, listen, you think? He, no, he didn't do it on purpose. He, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I like the guy. I like the guy if he wasn't okay. in the UFC. You got on, you got in the UFC. I didn't tap. I didn't, I didn't get knocked out. You know, it was a medical thing. And I understand that he, Matt returned me and I put my arm out and it dislocated, but we've all been in training. Anybody that knows training, everybody will post out. Not all of them, but like, it's, it's a one in a million chance that my fucking arm dislocated and exploded and broke backwards. Like, right. And how do I not deserve a chance back at that? Like, 
I, I came back, man. I came back. I came back through depression. I came back through suicide. I came back and I fucking fought my way back. I didn't even get a shot back. I had to go win a fight. Uh, when I was told I would get a shot back because I was winning the fight, I go, I win a fight, you know, and I knock a guy out with with the arm that broke. Then I come back and I fight an LFA middleweight champion, knock him the fuck out after 94% thought I was going to get beat. Suck my dick. I won. And then I go and I make a debut, right? I make a debut and I fucking knock out a guy that had eight knockouts. And I get he was on the tail end. He was on his way up. But it's still a danger. So I fought him. I knocked him out. And then I fight Jerry Mearshart, who he had a tough fight with. And he right. lost. You're one and four in the UFC. Just you don't make the fucking shots. I should be allowed to call you out. I should be allowed to get that fight back. I earned that shit. This is the fight game. Why can't I fight anybody I want to fight? That's what I want to know. Fuck the position. So I don't care. If I don't, Ariel, I don't care if I'm number one. I don't care if I'm number 20. I don't care if I'm 25, 35, 45. I want that fight back. That's personal to me. I was just going to ask you that because it does seem like your trajectory is going like this. Unfortunately for him, it's going the opposite direction. Four or five, he's lost. He even has a loss to Gerald Mearshart. As you said, he's coming off I'm the loss. I'm giving him a chance. Right. Why wouldn't he I'm take it? Why chance. is he saying no to it? Does he not want it? He's, he, he, I've DM'd him two different times, Ariel. Respectfully, I've DM'd him. And he told me I should just, you know, you're, you're going like this, and I wouldn't even worry about the fight. It is what it is. Like, bro, no, bro. I'm a, comp I'm a competitor. What, who are hmm. you to tell me to just let it go? You know what I mean? Like you're in the UFC, bro. Yeah. Let, like you're not my fucking friend. I like you. I think you're a good guy, but like you're not my friend. Let's fucking run it back. And if you really beat me, why wouldn't you want it? That's my thing. And but right. let me just say because I don't think he'll take the fight. And if he takes the fight, sure. And I don't want this guy to hate me over this. And and I don't care if he does. But um, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to shit on the man as a person. I'm just trying to compete against the man in the cage. That's all. You know, I think we deserve a fair run back. Like, this isn't one surgery. This is two surgeries. Yeah. You know? Damn. This 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 shit fucked me up mentally. Of course I want to fucking get that anger back out on his fucking face. So, and if he doesn't want it, because that's my next fight. That's what I want. I want Dustin Stoltzfus. And if he doesn't want it, I want the winner of Cody Brundage and Rodolfo Vieira. Those are the guys I want to fight. Any of those three. Okay, I love it. Uh, can can I see the arms again? That's crazy the way they look. Yeah, like that. bro, it start it starts here, and it goes all yeah. the way down here, right? So then this yeah. is how straight my arm is. This is what I'm fighting with. So I got this arm that's completely normal. I got oh this my arm, gosh! Right, I can't go anymore, and so I can turn my hand over. My hand doesn't go any more than this. No way. Can, yeah, what? and 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 then I have this from here. All the way down here, they cut it open. Yo, stay uh -huh. tuned. We, we stay tuned, my friend. This house that I'm at, my friend made a documentary. Right, we just got all the rights and everything like that through Disruptive, Alex Davis, Marty Fish. Um, um, just stay tuned, man. Stay tuned. I went through hell and back uh -huh. to get here. You know what I mean? Okay. I went through hell and back to get here, and I'm not. I don't have the best story in the world, but I have a damn inspiring story because every time I almost made it, Ariel, I got knocked on my fucking face. So here I am. Is there any part of you, because you, you're not almost making it now, you are making it now, you are one of the most exciting fighters in the UFC, you're developing this fan base, you're a great guy to talk to, is there any part of you considering your past that is worried, when am I going to get knocked on my ass? Like history has told me I get knocked on my ass when good things are happening, are you afraid of the getting knocked on your ass part coming? Nah, man, I mean, listen, I'm in the UFC, I'm fighting the best in the world. I never, I never wanted to fight anywhere else. And, and I know everybody has their complaints about the UFC and I'm sure at some time things aren't always going to go my way and that's okay. You know, um, I know how hard I, I train, how hard I push myself. And this is why I rave about the people that are in my corner. My coach don't let me slack. Not that I slack anyway, but they'll push me even beyond what I think I can do, you know, and, that, and that's in Sean Brady and that's in John Marquez. That's in Jonathan Webb. And you can't tell me each time you see me go out there, I don't look better and better and better and better. And that's because I'm not rushing my career. That's because I won't take a fight until, okay, I went back in the gym and I started getting better. I'm not, and I'm not just going to take a fight because I need money. That's the whole point of working with people like this, Alex Davis mm -hmm. and Marty Fish, because they're smart. They're successful people. They're people that are going to teach me, don't be a dummy. Don't be manipulated. Don't be impulsive. You know, do this with your money. Do that. 
I don't know anything like that, Ariel. I didn't, I didn't grow up with a, with a family that instilled any values in, you know, financial support or financial decisions. And I don't have shit figured out yet, but look, losses are a part of life, man. We lose people we love from death. Like life is a brutal cycle. You think losing a fucking fight's going to break me at this point in life? No way, man. No way. And, I, and, and if I lose to somebody that's better than me, I take, I tip my hat to you with my receding hairline because, <laughs> you know, it is, it's, it's a brutal game, man. They love you when you win and um, they forget you when you lose. So, I, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to beat everybody. I just believe I can beat everybody. Man, you're the freaking man. I, I feel like I want to like run through this wall over here to my right. It's, uh, it's unbelievable listening to you speak and uh, you're someone that's very easy to root for and someone that's very easy to get behind. So I wish you nothing but the best. And uh, if I could just make one, one request, cause you will be back on many more times every time you come on the show can you fly to jupiter and do it from this room here because it was just Hell fantastic yeah. the connection well, listen I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have him come out and give me a setup like this like he yeah. i'm telling you if you ever need some video work man he works with uh, yeah. the balance management group i got him a job this is what's cool i want to say this about this man because he doesn't he gets zero fucking credit for the things that he's done social media wise because he's not that kind of guy but his name's chandler henry he did a documentary on me. We got the rights. You know, now it's it's mine and we'll handle what we got to handle. But this kid has had a rare uh, stomach issue where he literally was going to die in high school um, and was held back a whole year because of it and things like that. And he had no idea what he was going to do as far as a career. He was going to school for a totally different thing. Love my story. Came to me. We sat down. We were like, yo, we got to do this. He knew some of my stuff. Like we shared stories when we were in high school. You know, he made this documentary and then he got a job um, because I told them to check him out. And now he works for, you know, balancing management group, like doing all these film things for all these athletes and stuff. So um, he's, he's a very talented kid, man. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you to him. And uh, this is his setup. And hopefully he gets me one just as good. Well done. And and the shirtless look is uh, is just a nice touch as well. I appreciate that. I mean, you might as well flaunt so it if you got it. Look, the only reason I did this, Ariel, is because my jacket is fucking soaked because we rented mopeds out here. We were going to go to the beach and then come back um, before this interview, and we were soaked. My pants are still soaked. No, it's and all everything. good. Listen, <laughs> listen. If I look like that, I would do the show shirtless. Uh, you don't have to give me an excuse. Like respect, <laughs> you know. Flaunt it, my flex, man. my man. Well done. Dude, thank uh, you much love to you, Joe. All, let me thank you for having me on here anyway. Seriously, thank you. No this problem. is the second time, and it, it means a lot to me, man, because, again, I, I, before any of this was possible, I believed it was possible. So thank you. For sure, and many more to come. Enjoy the victory. Enjoy Florida. Congrats on a great performance. Another one. Looking forward to what's next for you, my man. All the best. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There he is, Joe Pfeiffer. I mean, holy smokes. How could you not love that guy? That guy is incredible. He really makes you want to love him, to support him, to follow him, to root for him. Tremendous stuff turning into uh, to one of our favorites here. What a guy. Absolutely. Um, oh, my God. Amazing. Um, I literally just sat in the control room and uh, in the back here. I was like, man, is he just like the most likable dude in the UFC? Like, geez, Louise. Oh, he's amazing. He's amazing. I really do enjoy him. Um, just the way he speaks. I like how he says my name all the time. You, you, you catch that? He always says, like, Ariel, this. I, I don't know. There's something about that. It makes it more personal. 